We can't predict the future, and many of these trends can be leveraged to become negative or positive, depending on how one uses them. How fast will these economic, technological, and political factors impact change for us as a nation, for us as a military, for us as the Army? So the challenge is, who is our competition today? Another lab? A headquarters? The Army writ large? A business? Or do we need to look at the larger set? Are our metrics global enough? Do we know not only what our adversaries are doing, but what our competitors are doing and what our allies as well? This is important to our survival of a, as a nation. We are the only army the nation has. At a national level, we have major challenges in education, IT, business competition, and others that are suggesting a broader set of S&T implications. I highlight this thought because we need our best and brightest thinking about where we are going as a nation and it requires a whole of government approach. Military must adapt to this environment we live in. The, na the nation's youth, 18 to 24, is the resource we have coming into our Army. How do we leverage their potential, make them more efficient and more effective, and achieve that decisive edge on the battlefield of today and tomorrow? Let me shift now to a little bit about what we're doing in TRADOC and the Army, in particular, how the Army can support and take on General Casey's challenge, our Chief of Staff, to continue to prepare forces for success in the current conflict, reset returning units to rebuild the readiness consumed in operations to prepare for future deployments and future contingencies, and transform ourselves to meet the demands of the 21st century. Next chart. What is it we need an Army to do? So based on those global trends, as well as a very comprehensive set of operational lessons learned, we've written an Army capstone concept that describes what the Army needs to do, what the future direction and shape of the Army must be, both in its program objective memorandum, buying equipment, as well as its force structure and total Army analysis. And in taking on both General Dempsey's challenge to ensure that we are not subject of a failure of imagination and the chief's challenges, it's imper imperative that we stretch our intellectual imaginations to generate the set of ideas that will guide us into the future. That's what the Army ca capstone concept tries to do. Provide the intellectual framework to determine how to conduct operations in current and future operational envir environments to prevent and deter conflict, prevail in war, and succeed in a wide range of contingencies by conducting full-spectrum operations, meaning simultaneous offense, defense, and stability or support operations. Nested within the capstone concept is the Army operating concept, which describes the employment of Army forces in the 2016 to 2028 time period with emphasis on the operational and tactical levels of war and describes how Army forces will defeat enemies and establish conditions necessary to achieve national objectives using two fundamental responsibilities as a part of full spectrum operations, combined arms maneuver and wide area security. Combined arms maneuver to gain physical, temporal, and psychological advantages over our enemies in land, sea, air, and cyber domains. Wide area security to consolidate those gains, retain them, stabilize environments, and ensure freedom of movement and, and action in those same domains. Key to realizing this concept includes decentralized operations through mission command, developing the situation through action, not just passively or trying to sense the situation through technology, and do, do that in order to act faster than the enemy. Apply an expanded understanding of combined arms that includes both military and civil, civil capabilities, joint, 
interagency, intergovernmental, and multinational. Develop leaders at every echelon who understand that they co-create context in the operational environment where all echelons and specialties exchange information and collaboration to drive operations. Achieving the necessary level of operational ability requires the Army to build, train, and equip forces capable of both combined arms maneuver and wide area security in a manner that will accomplish the tasks that are listed on this chart. Understanding what Army forces must do provides the purpose upon which to measure capabilities. Capability analysis establishes our current baseline in the context of what Army forces must do. And actions like capability portfolio reviews provide a holistic approach to determine what the affordable modernization with new, sustained, upgraded, and divested capabilities must be to achieve what we need Army forces to do. Metrics for establishing and assessing value are keys to cost-benefit analysis. This adaptability requires change in how we develop leaders and train those leaders. Recognizing the youth of today are learning differently with different tools. We want to move ourselves from a learning concept of the sage on the stage to a guide on the side, leveraging social networking and mobile learning technologies. These are the subjects of the new learning and training concepts. How can we leverage these to increase soldier resiliency? As well, we have a new leader development strategy, which focuses on the right knowledge, skills, and behaviors needed at lower grade plates as we are operating decentralized in and among the population, and that human, that soldier, is your best sensor, shooter, decision maker. How do we give them the right kinds of knowledge, skills, and behaviors at an earlier point in his career or her career with the experiences necessary uh, to achieve that level of skill? Such skills as understanding complex problems, negotiating skills, space and digital literacy at a higher level than we bring in today, reducing the need for specialties in performing routine tasks associated with space and digital activities, and moving that of our specialized capabilities to higher uh, level of uh, functions and tasks, in particular in our signal core, to that of operating the network and network management and leaving the ins installation, operation, and maintenance of digital capability to the everyday soldier as an additional task. Other skills such as cultural and foreign language proficiencies are essential to this future operational concept. Next chart. I've spoken on affordable force modernization in a number of forums and written as well on the user's view of the kinds of things I feel and we in TRADOC feel uh, would need, that need to be done in order to both help with the transformation of acquisition or acquisition reform as well as uh, those aspects of force modernization that are tied to acquisition reform. And it starts with establishing baselines, which I addressed previously, baselines that are across the organization and describe not only the organization but the warfighting function, how it fights, how it's organized, how it trains, what material it's equip equipped with, and how much all that costs. That baseline then should be the baseline against which we measure any improvement, whether it's in science and technology or in a new program or an improvement to an existing program, a new training initiative, a new leader development initiative. We have begun this process in TRADOC. We are about 70 percent complete with that, uh, establishing those baselines, and we're now completing the establishment of the warfighting function baselines we should provide that to the technology community so that you can understand the start point from where do we need to operate in order to demonstrate the improvement. We need to be clearly linked to the edge. The edge today is best found in soldiers that are deployed in Afghanistan, Iraq, and other places around the world. But increasingly, 
in terms of the network in particular, uh, the effort to put the entire network in one place out in the Army Evaluation Task Force. It's places like the, those that we're going to learn the most about what needs to change in our Army and how then to evaluate that change before fielding it uh, to theater. Although in many cases, I think fielding it to theater is in fact a very viable option and we should continue to do that. We need to get more knowledge earlier in the process, more knowledge from across our uh, various elements of our acquisition environment, whether they be costers, testers, pricers, program managers, engineers, um, users that represent not only the TRADOC community, but those that represent um, those that are, uh, are actual returning soldiers from various activities across the uh, environment of Iraq, Afghanistan, and the Philippines, for example. We've got to increase our in-house expertise to do this better, uh, not only inside of the acquisition community, the PM community, the ASALT, the RDE command, AMC community, but also inside of TRADOC, also inside the user community to get the right linkage to costers, testers, and systems engineers and the relationships between our various centers of excellence and our RDEX to ensure that on the front end, we can increase our level of understanding of requirements and costs so that we can make those trades at milestone A and inform the leadership of how those trades look, where perhaps some of the risk is associated with those trades, and be more transparent in that process to the senior leadership. We did this, uh, I think, very well here with the ground combat vehicle recently, uh, with a great deal of help from the red team, and that becomes, I think, the model for how we're going to help change acquisition um, and the development of requirements uh, for the future. Cost and schedule constraints, I believe, should be established for every program earlier on. So we're working with the G8, who has been very uh, instrumental in establishing cost targets for both APUC and PAUC, uh, both the production costs and the total uh, system research and development costs as well as life cycle costs as targets early on in milestone A so that we can compare those in the analysis of alternatives leading to milestone B and ensure again that the leadership understands which one of these alternatives gives us the best bang for the buck um, it, um, as we uh, try to develop these things on a faster time cycle incrementally and allowing for the insertion of technology and boiling down to what I call buying fewer more often. So we buy to achieve the size of the unit that's deploying, the R4 Gen model, and we take the next uh, increment for the next series of deployments two or three years later and continually um, incrementalize and allow for improvements in technology, changes in the threat, as well as changes in the political leadership, those three things are the three things that drive the majority of changes to stability in programs. And if we were to account for that, perhaps we could get ourselves ahead of this challenge we have in front of us where we, our record of developing ACAP-1 systems from new is not very good over the last 15 years. <clears throat> 